Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for equivalence classes. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to identify the equivalence class that an element is in, and you should be able to partition a space using equivalence classes. The motivation for this is that equivalence relations are what we use to say when certain things are the same or similar in some way. Now we're going to put all of the similar things into equivalence classes. We're going to group them together um, based on whether they're the same. Let's see an example of this. Let X be the set with these six colored shapes, red, yellow, and blue. And let E be the equivalence relation X has the same shape as Y. If we group these into the sets of things that are the same shape, we put all three of these circles together, we put the two squares together, and we leave this triangle on its own. Each of these sets will be what's called an equivalence class. And for example, this one will be the circle class, this will be the square class, and this will be the triangle class. One interesting thing to note is that the relation doesn't know ahead of time what shapes we have. The relation is only saying has the same shape. It isn't until afterwards where we partition everything that we can start naming things and say, oh, this is the circle one, this is the square one, this is the triangle one. Now let's see this a bit more formally. The definition of an equivalence class is this. Let E be an equivalence relation on a set X, and let A be an element of X. So X is a set, A is an element. The equivalence class of A, with respect to this relation E, is this thing. So we represent it using square brackets, but the definition of this is, is as follows. The equivalence class of A is the collection of all X in X, such that A is related to X. Or put another way, the pair AX is in the equivalence class, or the equivalence relation E. So we also call A a representative for its equivalence class. We'll use that language a little bit later. Now, before we actually compute some of these things, um, it's helpful to think about what is the type of this object. This is something that often confuses people. So whatever this actually represents, it's a collection of all x with some property. So since it's a collection of all x with some property, it has to be a subset of x. That's why the equivalence class is always a subset of x. It's some elements with some property. Now let's look at some examples to help really understand what's going on here. Let x be the set of integers and let E be the collection of all pairs such that the absolute value of the first coordinate is equal to the absolute value of the second coordinate. Put a little more in human language, it's the collection of all, uh, or you say that X and Y are related if they have the same absolute value. So what's the equivalence class of minus one? Well, what things have the same absolute value as minus one? That's minus one and one. So if you wanted to, you could represent the equivalence class of minus one is these two points, but you could also represent it as um, the equivalence class of one. Both are fine. Similarly, the equivalence class of two is two and minus two, and you could also represent this as the equivalence class of minus two. Finally, the equivalence class of zero is just zero. It's the only integer that has the same absolute value as it. So right away, we should see that representatives are not unique. You can have many different representatives for the same equivalence class. Now let's go back to an example that was one of the trickier examples of an equivalence relation. Let X be the set integers cross naturals, and we'll say that two pairs are related if PY is equal to XQ. Remember that this was just a fancy way of saying uh, different representations for the same rational number. So for example, one half would be related to two quarters. So if we want to represent the 
equivalence class of 1, 2, it's all things that have the same, uh, that simplify to 1 half. So 2, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8, all of those. Similarly, if we want to find the equivalence class of 0, 1, this will be all 0, comma, a natural number. Those are all the things that give us 0. You might uh, be wondering about negative numbers, but the second coordinate we're insisting is from the naturals, so we, we only are allowed to take naturals in the second coordinate. All right, let's look at one last example, and for this one, uh, I want you to work through some things. So let x be the integers, and we'll say that x is related to y, if and only if y minus x is a multiple of 4. So this is a, a somewhat technical um, uh, property, but if you work through a couple, it uh, becomes clear what's going on. So I want you to list out all of the following equivalence classes. And I've started one for you. This is the equivalence class of 0. So the elements of it are 0, 4, 8, 12, blah, blah, blah and minus 4, minus 8, minus 12, blah, blah, blah. The way you can see this is the equivalence class of 0 is all things that are related to 0. So when you plug that into the definition here, it's all y minus 0 is a multiple of 4. In other words, y is a multiple of 4. So that's what we listed out here. Take a moment to complete the others. All right, now let's take a look at what these equivalence classes are. So this one is all y, where y minus one is a multiple of four. So if you rearrange that, it will be that y plus one is a multiple of four. Sorry, y minus one is a multiple of four. So it's all things that are one more than a multiple of four. That's another way of saying it. All right, what about the next one? It's all things that are two more than a multiple of four. Next one is things that are three more than a multiple of four. And then finally, the last one is things that are four more than a multiple of four. All right. Now I want you to take a moment and reflect. What do you notice about these equivalence classes? Are there any observations you can make? Take a moment to make some observations now. So two things that I notice are that every integer shows up somewhere in here. And one way to see that is, well, let's start at zero for now. This will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and then it keeps looping. And then if you go down, it'll be 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, etc. So everything's going to be in one of these classes. Another way to see it is that everything will be uh, in at least one equivalence class because it will be in its own equivalence class. Second, if an integer is in two equivalence classes, like 4, so 4 is in this one and it's in this one, then those classes have to actually be the same. So if there's any overlap, they actually have to be the same equivalence class. Let's see that another way. 8 is in this equivalence class, and 8 is in this equivalence class, but the sets are the same. So that brings us to an important theorem in this section. If you have an equivalence relation on a set X, and you have two uh, equivalence classes that share an element, then they actually have to be the same. We'll see the proof of this in the next video.